4. Modern medicine. Nearly all the major 19th and 20th century breakthroughs in healthcare were made by West Europeans and North Americans. Ironically, it was European researchers working in colonies who found cures for some of the most lethal tropical diseases, such as yellow fever. This one is not even hard to go with because he says the majority, which means there's a minority of 19th and 20th century medical advances that were made by non-Western areas. And it's easy to talk about which ones they were. Uh, but consider a disease that happened in 2020 uh, and that you can solve that disease. There's another disease that was similar to that same one that happened in 2020 that you needed to solve the problem in the same way. Uh, there's a slave called Erasmus who went and shed this scientific light to the Americans and made them knowledgeable of this advance that helped millions of people in America survive. Not to mention that a lot of the diseases and, and, and fights against uh, diseases in West Africa were utilizing techniques that they had heard from other Africans. Uh, and you would have to go and read individual doctors and stuff like that at the time. Lots of medicine today, modern medicine, uses um, extracts from herbs that used to be used by natives all across the world. Um, it's not it's not that the West didn't do the majority of work at this point. It's that why do they do the majority of work and why do they do them in Africa? It's because they had colonized the regions and they use them as laboratories for their science and the populations that existed at the time had to sit now it's very convenient that he chooses the 19th and 20th century to talk about medicine as if the medicine that came before is not utilized today which the reality is a lot of medicines that were made way prior to then were utilized obviously the advancements of the 19th and 20th century are good but what about things like surgery and stuff that were discovered hundreds no thousands of years ago things like glasses all these other types of stuff it's it's a very convenient thing to choose so that it can isolate the west and it still doesn't we could sit here and go through hundreds of medicines invented in africa that helped the west but as we're not going to do that, let's just read one thing that will make it quite obvious to you that there are several writings in Western archives that depict African contributions to medicine in the 1800s. Roberts has chronicled how John Smith observed the anti-inflammatory properties of the Unima plant which could be boiled and then applied to swollen body parts to decrease water retention. Both palm oil and palm wine were used for a variety of purposes. Palm wine could be mixed with boiled unima plants to ease constipation and ointment could be derived from pounding the plants, leaves and mixing them was from the enslaved Africans that Smith also procured a treatment for dysentery by pounding, drying, baking, and consuming the pokema plant. Treatment for stomach aches, smallpox, worms, venereal disease, toothache, scurvy, and hemorrhaging were among the lengthy list of cures Smith learned from West African experts. However, the names of the African botanical and medical experts who informed the ministry ministers correspondence are absent from these accounts to the royal society western medicine my foot five the consumer society the industrial revolution took place where there was both a supply of productivity enhancing technologies and a demand for more better and cheaper goods Without elastic demand for manufactured cloth, for example, there would have been little point in driving down its price. What he's talking about is mass production. Mass production predates the Industrial Revolution. Of course, the Industrial Revolution ramped it up, but 
there was mass production in West Africa, there was mass production in the Islamic Golden Age, mass production in China. China was one of the most mass producing civilizations in history, and there was mass production elsewhere. This is not a distinction. It it ramped up in the industrial uh, world, but by this time, I wouldn't exactly call it purely Western. Six, the work ethic. Westerners worked longer, worked harder, and saved more of what they earned. This led to unprecedented capital accumulation, which in turn led to investment in the wonders of modern technology. Uh, no. Just no. And of course, if you want to talk about modern technology, then you have to talk about how some things that are in modern technology, I see you show a car over there, they were supplanted again by African technologies such as natural rubber, which gave birth to um, galvanized rubber, which galvanized rubber is what you use in cars. Believe it or not, without the rubber from natives in America and in Africa, which were being harvested before Europeans got there, they were then utilized in cars. This is only one thing that is utilized in technology today that was influenced by foreigners. It is easy to underplay the significance of natural rubber as an invention, but you can see that it affected the economy of America and the world significantly and changed everything in a way in a way that riding on metal rims or wooden rims or other weird substances that were tried at the time couldn't, not without the invention of rubber. And the second thing we should look at is palm oil, another African invention which today is responsible for almost so many products, it's millions and literally billions of dollars and then products it affects so many products in the world that it's not even funny and this palm oil before the westerners decided to completely colonize was mass produced and mass sold and made people in west africa very very rich now i want to show you how significant it was not just to technology, but to what he was talking about before, mass production. Even in the Industrial Revolution, it was there. Look at this. Palm oil is said to be found in 50% of the supermarket product, from food to cleaners to cosmetic. It is a type of vegetable oil derived from palm oil fruit. This controversial ingredient may be present in some form in nearly every room of your home. It is widely used for its properties and because it is cheap. The reason it's cheap is because Indonesia took this palm oil from the West Africans and they planted it in, the, in those regions and basically they took the market away from West Africa. Obviously West Africa is still a significant market but Indonesia is, was made very rich by doing this and now palm oil is everywhere this African invention that contributed significantly to almost everything this guy talked about medicine technology consumer markets the industrial revolution come on people for hundreds of years these killer apps were essentially monopolized by West Europeans and their cousins who settled in North America and Australasia. They are the best explanation for what economic historians call the Great Divergence, the astonishing gap that arose between Western standards of living and those in the rest of the world. Yes, Western civilization did empire. It did war. It did slavery. But these weren't the things that led to the Great Divergence and the period of Western dominance of the world. It was the six killer applications that were crucial. And this Western bundle of institutions still seems to offer humanity the best hope of solving the problems we face in the 21st century. 
Maybe the biggest of these problems is not the rise of China, radical Islam, or carbon dioxide emissions, but our own loss of faith in the civilization we inherited from our ancestors. Winston Churchill was no f The modern world is not an offshoot of the West. It is a offshoot of previous worlds that existed and contributed heavily into the modern world. Discounting stuff like slavery, empire, and colonization, and imprisonment is one of the most disingenuous things that someone can do in real life. It's You can't minus something that actually happened. And it is true that the West did some good things, but they also did some really horrible things. And those horrible things led to the destruction of places that had thriving economies, that had thriving technologies, thriving science. You cannot, and I state again, you cannot take that away. This is not a real reading of history. This is selective reading of history. But if you take a real reading of history, you will see that the fast march to the future is in the hands of those who accept the world and what the world has to offer, not those who take pride in single societies because no single society is responsible for its own rise, especially if its rise is significant in the world. Friend of Gandhi. In 1938, Churchill defined the central principle of Western civilization as the subordination of the ruling class to the people and to their will as expressed in a constitution. I've already showed that this does not fully explain just the West. It also explains Iroquois nations and other nations, by the way. The Iroquois are only one. Uh, the other dude, the founding father, wrote about several other nations that had that same thing. And in Africa, there were several as well that operated as confederacies and had this thing where the ruling class is subject to the people. Maybe you know of another civilization that came up with that simple but uniquely powerful idea. I don't. Do your research, mate. Do a lot of research. It is so evident and obvious. It is in Western books. There's hundreds of books. There's tens of books that talk about civilizations outside of the West that had this. And I'm talking about from first accounts. The ones that I showed you are not people who wouldn't be aware of what they're talking about. These are first-hand accounts that show you that there are several civilizations that were like that. This is very, very desperate. And the West is a joke. It is not real. All these things were there in other civilizations all over the world. I'm Neil Ferguson. Fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford for Prager University. I'm Grassy C and I approve this message. Subscribe for more videos.